Research demonstrates schoolyards can contribute to students' health and learning. Schoolyard quality makes a difference to physical activity levels and learning opportunities. As members of Ontario school communities, through your school councils, physical education classes, healthy schools or eco-schools committee, even as individuals, we're asking you to take an hour to use a standardized audit tool to assess the quality of your own schoolyard and answer some questions that will probably require a trip to the office. The data you collect can inform discussions about priorities and goals for your schoolyard. We want you to share your results with us. You can use our easy to navigate online tool or you can print a copy of the survey and mail it in. Your work as citizen scientists will help us create a comprehensive picture of schoolyard quality across Ontario. And by doing that, we're in a position to advocate for the best in policy and resources for Ontario schoolyards, keeping our kids healthy, active, and in touch with everyday nature. Now, let's get started. To get started, let's walk around the whole school and number off each entrance. We're counting entrances to the school ground, not the school. We'll call this entrance number one. This entrance, you can access it by walking or by bicycle, but there's no driveways to park. To say there is parking, parents have to legally be able to leave their cars for a few minutes while they head inside the school. The next group of questions asks about any entrance. They want to know if there are any speed limits over 40 kilometers per hour, because that might be a safety hazard. And there's a bus stop right there. Now that we're in the schoolyard, we're going to count the things and say what condition they're in. Good, adequate, or poor. Did you know that researchers from the US, Europe, and even Turkey have found that uh, playgrounds with more activity promoting features have more active students? The tool we are using comes from England and it shows that schools with high scores have more active kids than schools with low scores. Okay, let's get counting. A lot of this seems pretty obvious. In this area we have four square and the condition is poor because as you can see the lines are starting to fade and the paint's starting to chip. There are two types of structures listed here. There are single component structures like this and multi-component structures like this adventure playground. It has slides, stairs and tires and many others. These are an example of something adequate. There's a little bit of wear and tear but they're totally useful. Eloise, how do we count this field? Well, they just planted new grass, so when the fences come down, it'll be really good. Huh. Well, I think I would count this field as two, because two sports can be played at once. When the goalposts go back up. But they want to know how many courts there are, including half courts. There are four courts. That means three different groups of kids can play at the same time. They also ask about seating. That includes benches or chairs, but it could also mean these rocks Locks. This area includes eight pieces of seating. Right now we're counting how many bike spaces there are, not the individual racks. How many are there? 52! There are more other places! This is a herb garden and in the spring we're going to go clean it up. There's a big sandbox here. It's not on the list but we can check other and write it in. There's a whole section on schoolyard aesthetics. That means things that make the schoolyard look good or pleasing. For each of these things, they want to know whether we think there's a none, some, or a lot. A lot means there's enough to affect the feel of the school as a whole, like plenty of shade trees. Some means just one or two isolated things, like a mural on a wall, for example. Next, they want us to estimate how much of the grounds have different types of surfaces. There are many ways to do this. For example, you can go into Google Earth, you can paste it out with steps, or you can measure it. Overall, what percentage of the ground is covered by grassy areas, cement, or a safety surface like wood chips? I think the greatest proportion is the grassy area, but I don't think it's half. Let's measure it with steps. Finally, there are a bunch of questions about how the school year is being raised and fundraising. We know the answers to a bunch of these questions, like how, many, how much time we spend outside every day whether there are sports equipment or they're called loose parts kits with materials like burlap, pine cones, and sticks to get students playing creatively, or whether there are an organized game during recess. 
but we might have to ask at the office for the answers to others, especially about how much we fundraise in this school year to budget out of our school.